Good evening, everyone. Thank you. Um, my name is Gugun Jinge, and I work for the Institute for Justice and Reconciliation, and I work for the Afrobarometer Project. Um, today, I would like to welcome you guys to the IGR's Reconciliation Award in partnership with the A4 uh, Foundation. Each and every single year, the IGR recognizes an individual or an organization that does work, that contributes towards achieving reconciliation in South Africa. And those organizations, or rather those individuals, can be based in different industries. Could be in politics, media, business, culture, and today we are recognizing an organization and an individual that is within the arts and culture sector. So, just a couple of uh, house rules before we start. The bathrooms are in that corner on your left. Um, IGR are also very visible on social media, so you can hashtag um, Recon Award 19 in all your social media posts and you can tag IGR on Twitter it's at underscore IGR underscore and on Facebook it's Institute for Justice and Reconciliation what a mouthful um, but yeah to be telling to, so as I mentioned today we will be speaking about or rather we'll be recognizing individuals or organizations within the arts and culture sector and to, and this today's theme is the art of reconciliation so for the past 20 years as I mentioned um, IGR has been recognizing an individual in a, in a, in a specific sector. Um, sometimes it's people within the politics uh, department or sometimes it's in people who contribute towards combating corruption and crime within within our country. Um, and IGRA goes into quite, a, quite an extensive process when it comes to selecting those even individuals. And today, in partnership with the A4 Foundation, we are recognizing those in the arts and culture sector who do work um, that is important, work that is needed. Um, when it comes to fostering reconciliation and justice in South Africa. But to tell us more about today's theme, please join me into welcoming Professor Tim Muriti, who is the head of the Peace Building Interventions at IJR. Uh, Professor Tim does quite a lot of work when it comes to peace building, so please um, welcome Professor to the stage. Uh, good evening, one and all. Um, there, there is a lot of possibility in art. And we talk about the art of possibility. So you're all most welcome to this event. As you heard from Gugu, my name is Tim. But before I start, I do want to just acknowledge all those who've really played a very important role in getting us here today. I will mention them by name, and hopefully you'll get a chance to meet them. Zusipe, can you please raise your hand? So the corner there, Mikhail, sitting down here. Uh, Sam, where's Sam? Ver, Veronique, hidden. Daniel, down. oh there she is. Niv, there's Niv. Jody, there's Jody. Our MC with the mostest, Gugu, you just met. Uh, on the A4 side, Paulus, he's at the back there, and Josh. Right there. Thank you so much. This is just to show you that this is not um, uh, an individual effort by any means. It is a collective effort. Uh, and this year's theme, we've picked the art of reconciliation. Um, the A4 will be introduced to you briefly by Josh in a moment. The IJR has chosen this theme together with the A4 to celebrate the art that we have in South Africa. As you know, we have a long and challenging and troubled history. Um, and art played such a central role in lifting the spirits of people who were living in very difficult circumstances. 25 years after the fact, we're here still striving to make the society a better place to live for all. And what better way to do it than through art written, drawn, sung, and hopefully you'll get a feel for all those different art forms uh, today. So we're very, very grateful that the A4 Foundation has chosen, has, has, has agreed to work with us uh, on this uh, theme. Uh, and you will be able to experience the visual arts, the music, and the spoken word on this side um, as you walk around the room uh, in the intermission. Um, I just want to a, a welcome you all again to this event. You are most welcome. This is a creative space, and we hope that you will also be inspired uh, to be creative in your own right, as you are. 
all creative by nature. Uh, as you walk around and peruse the remarkable outlets all around uh, you. So, um, as Google said, visit us on social media. Our offices are not far from here, and feel free to pop in. Some of this art is going to end up in the walls in, in IGR, so feel free if you really want to see it again. That's a good excuse for you to come and visit us at the IGR. And so, you're most welcome, and please uh, keep art alive in your spirits and your souls. And together, let's make the world a better place. Thank you. Thank you, Prof. Um, before we, we actually get into the most heated part of things, we kind of need to something to liven us a bit and also to, rem to remind us that actually we are here because of art and the fact that reconciliation alone or rather justice in South Africa cannot be achieved by using traditional methods, but also we need to constantly reinvent the wheel because the societies that we live in uh, are constantly changing, the communities that we live in are constantly changing. Um, so to, to start off this evening, before we introduce um, the A4 Foundation, I'd like to invite Sipogazi Jonas to, to perform for us tonight and also kind of remind us what is it that we mean by art, the art of reconciliation. Uh, Sipogazi Jonas holds a master's degree in English literature as well as an undergraduate degree in drama and English, um, and as a writer, performer, and poet, she has written and produced and performed uh, in three one-woman poetry shows, including Poetry Under the, Under the Stars, Conspiracy Theory, and The Wrestling with Dawn. I'm not gonna read much of her bio. Um, it is available in one of the handouts, but she's an incredible and amazing artist, and we're so um, grateful to have her join us tonight. Spogazi, if you can please come to the stage. Um, good evening, everyone. I usually don't give any context to my work, but I think in light of the theme today, it's quite important just to, to contextualize a little bit. Um, I think it's just really to emulate or exemplify really how art engages or challenges the idea of reconciliation. Um, the first set of poems I'm gonna do, which are pretty short, are around reconciliation, around language and identity. I'll be sharing the English poem which I wrote and then and it's a Kosa and Afrikaans translation which were translated by Bongeni uh, Konwana and Peter Odendal. And then uh, be thinking about the reconciliation of space and especially in a place like Cape Town, um, something that one may not think about unless they're affected by it. And then finally, in honor always of the young ladies who fought for their hair, for fees must fall, roads must fall, thinking about the reimagining of reconciliation or the idea of reconciliation as a whole um, currently. All right, here we go. When all is mixed to dough, I hold a pinch of every is a closer poem I write up to my mother's mouth to knead between her teeth. And we deliberate on dry ingredients. This idiom here, these translations there, those puns there, and these ones here. But she is mum on my substitution of self-rising flour for yeast. She knows it is the best I can do in the circumstance of a tongue baked in surrogacy. Every December, in exchange for a tapaway full of roaster gook tried over coals, I present Umama with English poems to match the decadence of the season because English, with its heavy hand of sugar, corrodes my vernacular. English poems never let me forget that this bowl I work in is borrowed. When we break bread at the kitchen table, we slather slices of my mother's tongue with margarine, steer it along a steaming tide of ruebos or a glass sweating with ice and oros. But I don't know how to make this meal last me all year long. I want to pray in a Give us this day our daily bread. And when we commune with you, never let us need grace again. Kakonge sele kutovi we kwa inchama. Dikunzula kuyo yonke eni bongo eni ipalange si kosa ni isondeze eni lunye ni gamama. Aichi abeke pagati kwa mazinyo aki. Si tamu nge zitago ezi sile layo. Esa sato si beke paya. Lengukulelo yi beke apa ezi zikali makama si beke apa kwa ye wonge ze ezi ya paya. God was yam kohinsa is bambeli, zong kubos in Yukolayo in the way near quail. We asi, Kuko Kong and Nokwenza, Pansi Gualemeko, you will be lemoleko. Hokomot December. 
and it was a siege as a cat up away as it will lay rostile as if I knew a man at any the end of the umama in a bongo yes in gassy ugelanisa is yolos and the pressure on yak is in gassy no good hair was so she shakes out with warm than good in a bongo yes in gassy yell and deliver no good as a siege as in the over the cover of us as a symbol echo as it is a song at a feeling as a kitchen see your bow we look at my man in my turn Look up and let a lady go from the way to your robots. Okay, so no mailing get classy band. I or us and as in a song and Johnny as a seed was it was the Ugusi Twala Unyaka Wonke. Do not run over Tandas and Yes, it was a sipping and change a song. I said to say, Miss Angie Mitch. Why a city is a woman and an hour? Ungas, who see a case lamba taking a bag of corn as all stood here. Oh, ek ek nepi van elke is het kans aan gedag wat ek skryf voor my maas mond. Om tussen haar dan met ek nie. Ons bedank die droos bestaan jylle. Daai idioom daar. Die vertaling hier. Die woordspelings hier en daar. Maar sy sê nek niks oor vervangings so self race meel in plaas van gas nie. Weet, dis die beste wat ek met die tong in die ander oond gebak kan doen. Elke december. In die ruil van die tipperbak vol die roosterkoek op die kole gebraai, bedien ek my Engelse palms aan die mama om by die seizoense verval te pas. Engels se swaar seker hand verweer my huis daar. Engelse palms laat my nimmer vergeet die bak waarin ek werd as geleende God. Ons breek saambrood om die kombuistafel. Ons smeer my maase tong dik met margarine. Loods dit oor een stoomende rooibus tegetij of een glas wat oor ons in ijs soot. Ek weet nie hoe om die maal te rek dat ons heel jaar lang kan eet nie. Ek wil en is het gans op het. Gee ons vandag ons dagelikse brood. En wanneer ons saam jou is, mag ons nooit weer genade skort nie. Rumen in the Cape Town station. Every night from platform 1 to 22. A herd of locomotives, face heavy and stomach strained, assembled to chew the cud of stories grazed along the line that day. Kaeli Cha eats at 4 a.m. It's a hot porridge of Mam Nanfika and her posse of domestics who are stirred to the edges of the city bowl. And a third, month class, a third class monthly ticket is Dompas incarnate. It ferries them ar across the river Styx between halves and those who make having possible to prune Madam's children and raise her daisies. Goodwood, during tea, slacks the tanning with mercury hair and limbs like Boltong, who remembers when first class meant white. But now she thinks it means money and hauls the varicose vein of nostalgia to pensioners' day at Grand West Casino. Rosebank after lunch is the Congolese boy in a kaleidoscope of skins, a Gobsa accent wrestling his French. War follows him everywhere. And hair locks like Songololo's burrow under a snapback, so these Jordans are designed for swag, not basketball courts. <laughs> Athlone at supper is a nest of blue collar spider men swinging like colored baubles from open doors and between carriages. The sadism of touring ancestral hunting trails and there where the old family lived before the evictions of the 60s. Oh, yeah. See, in this poem, and in Constantia, trains must keep off the grass. <laughs> and the last one. Have these young ones not come by way of the sky? Somewhere between external and extinct, between freedom and law, adolescent galaxies awakened to the appetite of black holes for light. Their minds are tailored in spring revolution. Bloom jacaranda rage into this cosmic neighborhood. Their tongues like petals bleed to the streets. And hear it, it's in the protest of their speech. Arrest us, it's fine. But this hair is mine. This kink was ordained by the divine, so maybe your rules need to be refined. See it in their dexterity with time, hauling struggle songs like carcasses from the jaw of the past. Even out of tune, their voices resuscitate rage with impunity, pronunciation crippled inside a colonial brace, yet they limp along to embrace a generational mandate. Our names will be set free from the mouth that is a grave. 
We will no longer die inside a chewing tomb. Not without making the mouth sick with ulcers, leaving teeth stained black with melanin on our way out. Even archives and history will be forced to pronounce our names correctly around a seizing tongue. But how will they account of us? These patch patch children, when they quilt themselves back into the void, when scattered seeds like dandelion constellate to catch up with Orion, regale him with tales of our democracy, which is one part water and two parts gravity, diluting the state of emergency and keeping us mum in this complacency, keepers of a colonial crypt, fearful of rocking boats while launching middle-class curses like rockets to confront the moon for the rising tide of proletariat protest. But history will be kind to the hashtag. Recognize it for what it was, a footprint of celestial bodies in afros and fades and locks and braids who left their borderless home only to find that we, those who had wished upon them, were sleeping oblivious to the stars falling around them. Ladies and gentlemen, I've been to a number of performing um, artist shows and I know that each and every time an artist says something that hits the heart, you snap. And I haven't, I haven't been hearing a number of snapping uh, in the room, but can we just practice for everyone? Because it's about to get lit. <laughs> uh, thank you so much, Spogazi. Spogazi has also been crowned as the first um, Cape Town Ultimate Slam champion. She has also been a featured performer at the Open Book Festival, uh, the Naked Word Festival, Word and Sound International Youth Festival, and also the 21st Poetry Africa Festival, including also the Abantu Book Festival. So she is quite amazing. Um, so to tell us more about the A4 Foundation, one thing that IGR prides itself is it's, it's the way it collaborates with individuals and the way it, it fosters partnerships uh, with other organizations and other institutions that have it at its heart, or rather within their work, um, to achieve justice and reconciliation. And IGR prides itself in those relationships and those um, collaborations. And today, we are really, really honored to have the A4 Foundation host us um, in their building, host us, and also showcase some of the work that's being um, the work that's being done here. But for, for, for us to know a bit more about the foundation and the work, incredible work that it's done, uh, please welcome uh, Mr. Josh Ginsberg, who's the director of the A4 um, Foundation, to tell us a bit more about the work that they do here. Thank you. That introduction. It is. It's. It's a pleasure. It's an honor to collaborate with, with you all. We're a very new organization, and we learn through interaction with organizations that have roots that are grounded, that have communities and relationships that help us identify how to get the best out of the work we hope to do. So thank you, and thanks for the team for being here. So it's, it's an honor. Um, let me start firstly to say to Sipokazi. I don't know where you are, but that was quite something. And there's always something quite humbling about the capacity for the voice, the word, the voice, the body to do all the work. And it's just, it's, it's refined, it is, um, it, it's just, it, it, we have it in us and if we work it, we can do it. And there's something just so empowering about that. There's nothing more than the body and the voice. So thank you, thank you for that. It was, you know, it was moving. Um, A4 is a not-for-profit arts laboratory, and what that means is it, it's a site for experiment. We're very interested in experiment. We, we believe that it, it's, it's a necessary part of innovation, well, and it is. To take a chance, to be open to what is possible, and to be open to failure too. Now, a laboratory is, again, it's a site, and we experiment in that location, but with what? And there are three tiers to how we understand that, that experimentation. On the one hand, it's with artists, and with cultural producers, and with curators. We say, be ambitious take a chance, push your ideas further than you would normally be able to do, and let's, let's see what that brings. The second is to experiment with art, and I, I think that's what you're all doing here today, and it's to say, how does art actually function in society widely? How do we understand the impacts of the work it does, and can we think of new inventive ways of experimenting and exploring its, it, its reach? And, and I think this is quite complex. I think uh, 
anyone who's had the opportunity to be affected by an artwork, whether it was a poem from a moment ago or an, a, a painting, a film or something, you know internally the catalytic power it has. It, it, it can push the imagination, it can bring you closer to some kind of disjuncture or, or some kind of tension that has otherwise been removed. It can inspire one. And there is the idea that if one is inspired, many can be inspired accordingly. Uh, but there's also a bigger question of like, how can a group be empowered? How can arts really shift the dial on how people understand each other, understand their own histories and understand the histories of others? And, and this is the big question about how to experiment with art in the public domain. There are big ideas about it. We know that it can host difficult conversations. There are lots of test cases, but we want more. We believe that more resources have to flow into the art sector to empower different parts of it. And to do that, we need to be able to share with people explicitly the work that it does. And that's the terrain of experimentation in that arena. That is both about powerful artworks that can exist both within and outside of the, the gallery or the sort of traditional art spaces. But it's also about looking at how artists work and how those ideas can be injected into non-art disciplines. Because to think, to be open to complexity, be open to uncertainty, is to be open to something unexpected. And again, thinking through, just listening to that, that poem, I'm reminded of a, a phrase, and frankly, I can't remember the source of it, but there is that, that line that says, uh, look before you leap. But something about the arts says, leap before you look. And I, I feel that in, in the work of Sipokazi, I feel like I don't know everything about what she's referring to, but I certainly feel it. And that's good. That feels like I can work with that and I can spend time unpicking that and I can probably move with that in a way that perhaps I couldn't move with something explicit that was shared directly to me. So that's tier two, experiment with art. And of course the third, which is again part of why this kind of collaboration is so empowering, is the experiment with organization. Why does an organization like this exist? What are the motivating factors at the outset? And how can we evolve in relation to the partnerships and the observation of needs through the work done to become something that is truly uh, like a resource to the community around us. The arts in South Africa is a very sort of complicated terrain because we have an abundance of talent. It's actually quite extraordinary. Abundance of vitality and capacity to creatively respond to very complex conditions. But we have very few resources. You have, I suppose, universities on the one hand that afford those that have the privilege of access, the opportunity to think about the arts in a, in a very deep way. And, and, and it, it generates a language which is very empowering, but also very alienating for anyone who doesn't have it. On the other side, it, it, it is money and the capacity for people to interact with the arts on the basis that they have the resources to do it. They can buy it, they can interact with the spaces that, that, that host it. And again, that's a narrow sliver of the population. And so what we have is we have a bookended situation, both limits being quite alienating and disempowering. And in actual fact, the arts is designed to account for all, and in fact designed to be in the public domain to excite and to catalyze and to innovate. So we became interested in trying to think about how we could participate with other organizations to find that middle, to find what it is to publicly face, to bring different individuals and organizations into conversation with one another, to test the limits of their practices as organizations and, and as individuals, and figure out how the arts can have a more active role to play in our society. So there is nothing more central to our concerns and our existence than the organizing principles of this event tonight, which is to wonder after organizations and individuals that genuinely try to understand the role of art. And we've had the privilege of interacting with both of these organizations, and it really is special to have you here and to host you here. But before I leave, I thought maybe I'd just offer three examples of things that have been here that maybe just as I was listening earlier, like were stand as reference of interesting test cases. The first was a, a work that we, we shared here when we first opened by an artist named Yoko Ono. You, I'm sure many of you have heard of Yoko Ono, the, the wife of John Lennon, is perhaps not just best known, but in fact one of the great conceptual artists. And Yoko made a really potent work called um, Men. The, the, the work is in fact an instruction set. It is, it is set. We received it as a set of instructions. We need a table, probably about the size of this, with chairs. You need to buy porcelain cups and saucers. You need to put up some shelves around. You need to break the cups and saucers, put them on the table, leave string, glue, and elastics, and see what happens. That's quite, I mean, it's a little bit more poetically articulated, but effectively, that's what it, it describes. And we watched when we opened A4 how people sat along one another and tried to reconstitute these cups and saucers, but they didn't reconstitute a cup that you would use to drink. They made things, completely amazing things, and the shelves were full in two days, and each one, 
expressed something of the capacity to make from broken and also to make something that you don't understand and yet you feel value around. It was a, a, a very beautiful thing. And it's a totally generative project. It can actually go to anyone who would like to do it. It's just as an instruction set. The second was um, a, a, a exhibition we did here recently. Well, in the, uh, the David Goldblatt, the, the, the late photographer, died early last year. Middle of last year, we did an exhibition in honor of him. David was a chronicler of apartheid, but a chronicled it in a very particular way. He described his photographic oeuvre as oblique. So whereas many photographers were on the site and scenes of a crisis, and that was absolutely necessary in translating the sort of atrocities of apartheid, David stood around and photographed things on the periphery. How did people live while these things were happening? And one of the, the remarkable events that I recall from that exhibition was something completely unexpected. In the opening room, there was a series uh, that he shot in the early 80s called Boxburg. And Boxburg was a white city or town, very much like Randburg where he grew up. And he, he went there as a, a sort of just to try and understand what was actually happening. And in, in these pictures, you see people living their lives completely candidly, playing piano and just like playing, you know, young girls at ballet and it's like a very serene environment. And this is just about parallel to or intersecting with states of emergency around the country. And I watched people, middle-aged people walk in and, and rebound off these photographs because these photographs that at the time no one thought relevant because they were accounting for something no one seemed to care about, 50 years later, are showing people, that was me. I lived like that. I lived removed from this and I did not understand or I did understand whatever the case was. But I watched people literally push off these photographs and that was not something that I expected. And I suppose in there you see how these photographs, these almost innocuous documents, can have power way beyond the origin of contact. And the third uh, case study is that of Zanele Moholi, who we had the great privilege of working with more recently. Zanele did a quite extraordinary thing. They commissioned 25 young artists from KZN to interpret um, photographs that Moholi had made in the medium of these respective <coughs> artists' choice. And in that way, the artists became patron. They l lifted up a whole community of artists that they believed were just simply excellent and not being offered the visibility and catalyzed them into these new works and brought those works here. And the, that, alongside with almost in parallel, seeing a show of Moholis in Joburg, of the Faces and Faces project, which is an ongoing archive of people, gender fluid people in general, but not specifically, who have in some way bound together as a community to sort of hold forth for one another, create space for one another. And seeing the capacity that that did to just really build, I, I mean, it's, it's amazing the amount of people that surround that, and amazing how I feel that that project in its own right has shifted the dial on how we understand gender fluidity in this country. Of course, Zanella is not the only candidate, though, not the only activist. But when you see the work, and you see the impact of the work, you register the relevance of it. And so, th these are the cases that we look out for. These are the, the situations that we hope to invest in, the capacity for people to shift our perspective, and to bring us closer to, to the notion of reconciliation as described earlier. So with that, I, I thank you again for this. It feels like really warming to interact with you all. Really. And yeah, I hope you have a wonderful evening. Um, thank you so much, Josh. Um, ladies and gentlemen, as I mentioned on social media, it is at underscore IGR underscore. And our hashtag today is Recon Award 19. Um, again, to remind us of why we are here today, we're going to have another performance by Boys Bow Band. I, 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 I practice that, such a tongue twister. Um, it is led by Colin Mayer, also known as Colin the Bushman. Uh, he's a writer, performance poet, actor, and a cultural activist uh, who focuses on identity and cultural restoration work. He does so by reclaiming indigenous values through the voice of the arts and also is a co-founder of the organization called Black, B-L-A-C. Uh, Colin shares his knowledge and experience with youth in Boynteville and the broader Cape Town. <coughs> also, he is a blues and jazz artist. He has performed in stage productions such as Africaps alongside a word that I can uh, pronounce. Um, he'll let us more, tell us more um, at the end of the evening about about the work that he does, but he's also such an incredible artist and we're really honored as IJR and the A4 Foundation to have him join us today. So if you can please join me into welcoming uh, Collins into the stage.
I choose for your hand. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters. Uh, I was now thinking more in the line of uh, it feels more appropriate if uh, when the item with my boys is done to then say a few words. What do you guys think? Ms. Bulaf, great one.
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you that you enjoyed uh, the guys tonight. Uh, we feel very honored to also come out and just present the culture again. Um, I was not asked to say something. What can I really say? I'm speechless. Uh, ever since this two and a half, three months now, uh, that we at Black, uh, me and Alma Titus and our other colleagues, has yes, put some time into this process. It started out one Sunday afternoon. We called them over by three after lunch. And uh, it started out, they, they heard my name is Colin the Bushman in the neighborhood. They couldn't understand why I don't feel offended by that. Because it's supposed to be a derogatory name, derogatory term. And then I broke it down. What is the actual meaning of Bushma? It means a man and a woman with the knowledge of the bush. He's a bossy man, he's a bossy fro, you know? And so the language started to come up. I started to tell them, to teach them a few things. What is white grass? It's good morning. And you must make like a rock that fall in a pool of water. Come, come, come grass. Yeah. And so if we, if we just go back in time in, in, in a sentence or two, in a memory or two, the first indigenous people of the land called Cape Town, Quick Quake. Now, Quick Quake is the Quick Quake of word or Nama word for Cape Town. And we are in an art space and we are celebrating art, you know, tonight and so on. In the name also of <coughs> reconciling ourselves with one another through the art and with art as an expression also as a human element also. And so, the local people, our people, back in the day, they looked at what's happening here at the foot of Africa. Two oceans meet here. It's always cloudy here. So, to name the place Ui Kwai is basically the original man Naming the place through an artistic view, through the artistic lens on what is happening at the foot of Africa, when the two oceans meet. Because we get about it quickly. It means the place where the clouds gather. That's what quick literally means. And if you look at the settings of Cape Town, two oceans connect, two oceans meet, it's always cloudy. And so I started to use the language and the culture as a reference tool to show them that we are not divorced. We've, we've never been divorced from art as a people, even on the Cape Flats. Art is considered to be human capital where I'm from. Because where I'm from, from the Flats, in the early days, of the 90s, late 80s, we already had groups like Black Noise. We listened to Ready D, Dion Daniels, Ready D, one of the top DJs in Africa, coming from the struggle days, being behind band albums. You know, how many records was banned of POC? But still, Prophets of the City, that's my eldest in the upbringing of hip hop culture. But if it wasn't for the consciousness that hip hop culture carried, and it broke through to me, and I became a spoken word poet, I became a rapper, I became a break dancer, I know how to mix records. We used to call graffiti spray can art. That's how, we, that's how we looked at it. It's spray can art. And then governments come and they call it graffiti. 
Dat wij burn graffiti because it's spoken. It's like spoken word when you hold a can, it's spreading out. We look at the language of the coin, the sand upon the rocks. Then we say that is rock art. You know what I mean? We say that is rock art. But that, and that might be art to the, to the Western psyche of oh, here this boy, this art. But that was and is messages that was left by one tribe to another tribe that's passing by. So that's another, that's another point that we can highlight to say that we are all from the artist's blood. When the creator, yeah, when the creator created us, it was, it's art. Look upon yourself, you're a piece of art, you're a piece of, yeah. And so we, we started, what, you, what we saw, what we experienced tonight here with, with the bow boy band uh, and myself and so on, is the result of how art began to speak to them. And it showed them also the ability that they have to can create, you know. There's one time, one of them come uh, to me uh, with a complaint. His heart was very low that particular day. And then we started to write a song about how we feel, you know. And then it ended up being a rap song. You know what I mean? Open oh, Cape Plates, when you are producing now a rap song on the Cape Plates, and you don't have a drama scene, or you don't have, then you just make a yeah, and then, and then we realize that the human body is a percussive instrument. Yeah, and then we started to produce rap songs. So, then, so what's out? What's the space? Like they say, what's the space? Because the bow band is releasing a hip hop record in 2020 with Colin the Bushman. Yeah. That's it. That's it. That's it. So I want to say thank you for, for having us. I just add seriously. I thank you very much. And uh, yeah, let's honor the space. Let's keep the one love and let's keep keep it real. Yeah. Keep it real. Thank you so much to the boy band band. What a tongue twister. <laughs> um, ladies and gentlemen, the, Af the IGR also makes sure that in the work that it does, it recognizes work that is done by young people. It mainstreams youth in its work, and it makes sure that the work that young people are doing towards achieving reconciliation, or rather fostering justice within the South, Af uh, South African communities, is recognized. So in the work that we do as IGR, we make sure that we always include young people, but also we include all those who, are, who, who identify as different genders. So we mainstream gender and youth in the work that we do. So today, before we go into the most important part of today, uh, we will also be recognizing learners who took part in the Global Dignity Campaign. Uh, the Global Dignity Campaign was an initiative that is an initiative that's um, done by about 70 countries across the world, and it's led by the ANSA, which is the Anti-Racism anti Network of South Africa. Um, and IGR happens to be part of that network. And we were the ones also within South Africa who also just ran in a, a global dignity campaign shortly. And today we'll also be recognizing learners who produced such beautiful artwork uh, there in the corner. But to tell us a bit more about the campaign and what went down and the reasons why we, we, we're celebrating these learners and the reason why we feel that they are an important element when it comes to, to achieving reconciliation and fostering justice. Uh, please welcome my colleague, um, Lucretia, who is the project leader for the anti-racism um, project at IJR. Um, good evening, everybody, um, and I'm delighted to tell you a little bit more about the wonderful project that we ran from June until October this year. Um, so the Global Dignity Project, as you heard, is um, an international initiative um, in 70 countries 
where they use uh, dignity um, in conversation for learners to understand what is the deep meaning of dignity and how learners can express dignity through different forms. And Arts Answer this year um, and the Institute for Justice and Reconciliation is a member of the Anti-Racism Network. Um, we ran a pilot project um, in three provinces in South Africa, one in the Western Cape, one in Gauteng, and then another in Port Elizabeth. And so, um, what is dignity? When we ask people what that is, you know, they always tell you about what dignity is not and how people have been stripped of their dignity. But it's really very difficult to identify what dignity is. Um, and, you know, dignity is our self-worth. It's what we, what we think of ourselves and how unique we are and how wonderful we are and the talents that we have um, and how we should nurture that, and how we should embrace that and how we should be proud of that. And when somebody takes that away from you and they make you feel small and they make you feel not included, then you say that they've taken your dignity away from you. When they've taken away your basic needs, you say that they've taken your dignity away from you. And so we wanted to hear, to learn us understand what dignity means. And so we embarked on this journey and we went around to different schools. We identified schools in those different regions. And we asked learners to, in any way that they feel comfortable, in any art form, tell us, give us your understanding of what dignity is. Um, and then the, the process, um, I'll just tell you a little bit about that. The learners at the schools could then, in any art, art form, which was poetry, music, uh, dance, um, some of the, the uh, paintings that you see here, um, and through speeches, they could use any art form to tell us the understanding. And you must understand that this was not a competition, so we weren't looking for the best artist or the best poet, but we were looking for the learner that could, that really had a very good understanding of what dignity is. And through their art piece, they depicted that. So they told the story through their art form. And so we then took a number of learners from each, um, from each school. We had a provincial level where we then got the learners together. We had a bit of a dialogue. We then decided who are the learners that would go forward to the national level. Um, and then at the national level, we went to Robben Island for two days, which I think was a very appropriate um, setting for the global dignity or for the dignity discussion. And on the first day, learners went around, they had a, a tour of Robben Island. Um, they um, had a wonderful experience, I think, for learners from diverse backgrounds to just come together and click and you know, just have um, this unity almost immediately they gelled, you know, was really fantastic for us to see. And I said, and, and on that same day, we asked learners from the different provinces. We had about uh, 22 learners and a good mix of girls, boys, uh, different races, different backgrounds. Um, and we asked them to, to do their presentations to each other. And I think for some of the learners, it, it was my third time to see some, some of the presentations. And every time I saw them, I filled with pride and excitement for our future. And I thought, if this is your understanding of dignity, then that encourages me. And so I, I ended up crying. And so I was bawling my eyes out. And you know what? I'm not ashamed of that because I'm proud of that. And um, to, tonight we have three of the learners here that we are very proud to showcase their work. You know, and, and you will see why I, I, I fall up. Um, with so much pride when you look at the work maybe a little bit later. And so um, on the second day, what we decided to do was to have an intergener intergenerational dialogue between the teachers um, and some civil society organization, um, civil society workers, and then um, and the learners. And we asked them to have a conversation about what dignity means. Um, lots of the, the learners then spoke about dignity in terms of equality in terms of respect for all, irrespective of your difference. Um, they said that um, it was also about fairness and it's about self-worth and self-awareness. So you can hear that the understanding of dignity was really good. And then they also spoke about some of the difficult things about what challenges our dignity or what, what are the barriers 
to people um, you know, receiving fairness and, and equality, especially within our, in our country. So we had a really good conversation with learners and teachers, and I think that then ended in um, a commitment from teachers and learners to say that I, I commit to, be a, to being a global dignity ambassador. And what does that mean to me? Um, and many learners said that I was going to go and start programs at school. I was going to share with younger learners what dignity means. I'm going to be a global dignity ambassador. And teachers <coughs> then committed to encouraging learners to also starting these conversations at their school. So I think, you know, just from those few people, it was less than 50 people. And I, I think when it might sound like a little, but when those 50 people go back to their schools, they are going to reach hundreds of learners. And so we want to encourage them, you know, and tonight, one of the ways that we can encourage them is by acknowledging the work that they've done. And so we are proud to acknowledge the work of three of our learners. I wish that we could have had all of them here this evening, but unfortunately we can't, and this is through the arts, and, and it's the arts that we see around us. So we've just chosen the art learners, but just their contribution, contribution to reconciliation by trying to help others understand what does it mean to lead a dignified life, that I'm going to play a part in leading um, a dignified life, but also showing dignity to someone else, and how can I do that? Um, and so, so we're very proud of them, and we're very excited to acknowledge and to honor them this evening. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you so much. Lucretia is going to help me hand out these amazing certificates to these amazing learners for the work that they've done. Um, also, if I could probably call on to stand for a picture with them also. Um, so I would like to call on to Nicola Thomas. Uh, the Institute for Justice and Reconciliation, <coughs> Nicola, recognizes your artwork uh, for, the, for the contribution that it, it is to, to, to the Global Dignity Campaign and also portraying and this, the understanding of of dignity in South Africa and what is it it means in our respective communities. So well done for such an amazing art piece. This is just also like to call on Shakira Pretorius. Uh, Shakira, again, the IJR recognizes your artwork as well um, as a contribution towards the Global Dignity Campaign and also in portraying the understanding of dignity in South Africa. Thank you for such an amazing and beautiful <laughs> but not least, we'd also like to call on Kayla uh, Jeffchus, also for a beautiful, beautiful artwork. The IGR does recognize your artwork for the contribution uh, to the Global Dignity Campaign and also portraying your understanding of dignity in South Africa. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you so much, Stan and Lucretia. Um, I'm going to give an opportunity to each and every one of you guys to just explain briefly, very briefly, uh, the idea behind your artwork and probably maybe showing us which one uh, on those three is your artwork and the idea behind your thinking and what you created and also your understanding of what it, what it portrays when, it, when we're speaking about reconciliation and when we're speaking about um, dignity. I don't know who wants to start. Okay. <laughs> Clothe in dignity with no fear of the future. Waardigheid is die moed vermoe om sterk te staan in die gezicht van teenspoed. Dit is om te staan waarin jy glo. Dit is om een voorbeeld te stel die jou woorde en dade. Die project het na my hart gele en wat ek glo het, elke persoon met waardigheid um, gehanteer moet word. Um, die focuspunt van my kunstwerk le in die oor van die vrou wat um, die wereld met trots en waardigheid in die oor kijk en um, Die trots wat sy uitstraal word vastgevang in die stemming van die kunstwerk en 
Um, sy is trots op haar geslag en staan op vir vrouwrechte. Ek geloof dat elke vrou moet um, die selde regering dier die kruis maans en ook die selde hanteer word. En die velker, um, of velker, staan nie net um, ons Suid-Afrikaanse reenboognasie voor nie, maar ook oor die hele land. En, um, ek geloof dat swaard, um, of die swaard, wit of bruin, is dit definieer nie wie jy is nie. Dit is my soos jy verskillende oordeer, dit maak jou besit wat jy lief maak en um, jou, jou kere bepaal nie jou status nie, jy kan draal wat jy wil, maar toch moet jy ook respect hee vir jou lichaam en um, ek voel dat, dit gaan nie oor die kere wat jy draal nie, maar eerder oor die indrukke waar is wat jy draal en um, net soos daar verskillende haarstyles is, is daar verskillende kulture en haar afrou stel, um, sy moet sê daar kultuur voor en sy wil daardoor sê dat ons verkoos het kultiere moet respecteer en ook ons moet oortuigings. En dan het ek um, uh, rooi en groen gebruik om um, om komplementaire, wat komplementaire kleren is, om um, eenheid ook, maar ook um, contrast voor te stel, wat wijst dat ons uh, eenheid kan vorm ten spuite van ons diversiteit. En dan, los ons die collage techniek wat ek gebruik het, wil ek, uh, waar ek wijst dat ons um, een vol, volwasse uitkijk oor mens, hoe ons mekaar met boelvaardigheid moet hanteer, of jy rijk of arm is, of jy gezond of ziek is, en gestreng of nie gestreng nie. So ek geloof dat, maak jy saak hoe die wereld na jy kijk nie, jy kan mens in menswaardigheid lewe. work is that one over there and as you can see everyone else's is more of a, a light approach to the topic and mine was a dark approach so I try to do try to depict the, the loss of dignity through my artwork and it shows a girl who was sexually assaulted and then dumped into a field and then the, the bones represent previous girls that have gone through that and I think my artwork wanted to show um, how, how women shouldn't feel unsafe just going about their daily businesses and just living their lives. They should have that freedom and people should treat women with you know, respect and dignity enough to um, allow her to be safe in the public. Yeah. So, um, it's a garden to represent the earth and it's overwhelmingly full. Um, when you first look at it, it looks light and happy, but uh, if you look closer, you see through the cracks there, there's a tombstone that says rest in peace dignity. Um, that is to show that it has died in most people, but it was buried respectfully by some who still has it which is also why there are those two people sitting on the bench. They had a tough life, but they feel safer together. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, ladies. And I'm, I'm ready to, to commission uh, for a beautiful artwork, because that is sterling work, such amazing art pieces. <laughs> Another round of applause for them, please, thank you. So, today we will also be recognizing, as I mentioned, an institution and an individual that does sterling and amazing work um, when it comes to achieving or rather contributing to our theme for the night, which is the art of reconciliation. Lalela is an incredible institution that commenced with 20 students in 2010. Um, today, they reach approximately 5,500 right through the Southern Africa region per week, which is quite amazing. Um, Stan will be joining me in honoring the, confirming the award to, to the Lalela Life Changing Art Group. 
enough speeches have been said tonight, so I'm not going to add to those speeches. It's suffice to say that, you know, this is an annual event where we honor people who are contributing to a better society. There are too many people standing on the sidelines, lamenting what's wrong, and I'm not saying there's nothing wrong, there's a lot wrong. But there are also those who get their hands dirty, who ask themselves, what is, this, what is it that I can do to make a change? And we are proud to recognize people like that. And as you heard tonight, the focus is on people who work in the field of art. Um, and and, and we, we want to say to them that they're actually going to be invited back next year. Because next year we celebrate 20 years of IJR's existence. And one of the things we're planning to do is to bring all the, the winners back into one room. And so you, you um, following in the footsteps of quite illustrious people. Uh, um, Tim Mudisi, I think, was one of the first to receive the award for getting South Africans to talk. Uh, Peter Dirk Ace. Um, and, uh, you know, the names are, are just too numerous to mention. And so I want to say to, to those who are receiving the award tonight that you're in good company, but we as the Institute for Justice and Reconciliation want to publicly honor you for the great work you do um, in fostering and promoting art. So can we have the first recipient? So let me read what it says here. Um, Reconciliation Award 2019. Uh, presented to Lalela Life Changing Art for the Art of Reconciliation, celebrating the arts and people who pursue justice and reconciliation through imagination and creativity. and sweet. Um, it's a huge honor to be here. We really are humbled. Um, thank you so much to the IJR. Um, it's, it's an incredible accolade and recognition to receive, but really the honor should be shared among our facilitators who go in every day, four days a week, and create these safe spaces for learners who come from some very difficult backgrounds. They, through art, uh, create these spaces where children can connect with a different part of their, their brains, their imaginations, and really envision a different future for themselves. And uh, next year, being 10 years, our 10 year anniversary, we're very proud to have followed some learners on their journey right from the beginning, and to see them really blossoming into incredible, fulfilled, self-actualized human beings who are, many of them have gone on to, to do some wonderful work, not just as artists, but people with, with real lives, with a, a real sense of self. And we're very proud to be here. Thank you. Thank you. The work of the Lalela group is the one that is behind um, the, the, the wall behind everyone. Um, so it would also be nice to just engage with it as you as the night goes on and admire how beautiful how beautiful it is. Today we're also recognizing uh, Nelly Swa Ludla, who is the founder of Early Birds um, Lifestyle Academy. Early Birds Lifestyle Academy is a learning support program um, that uses integrated approach to a holistic education to support the learning gaps uh, identified by the education crisis within the country. It also, it, its approach uses art as a, as a tool, rather, uh, to re reinforcing critical thinking within the learners. Um, it also uses visual arts that is used to foster mindfulness um, and for early development on those school, school children that are in grade R level, and also for their learners to progress, to progress um, greatly through primary grades and at aftercare space. Stan, if you could please help me with 
Thanks to you. And so let me read it again. Um, the Reconciliation Award 2019 is presented to Meliswa Gludla, 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 uh, founder of Early Birds Lifestyle Academy for the Art of Reconciliation, celebrating the arts and people who pursue justice and reconciliation through imagination and creativity. Meliswa Gludla. Supogazi. I am that girl that's been sliding in your DM on Instagram. <laughs> for the arts. For the arts. <laughs> yes. Um, I'm going to be slightly in the middle, not short, not long. Please join me in breathing and helping me calm down. I might be caught up in the agony of putting what I do into words. I'm going to ask for a one, two, three, and then everybody holds it in and count five seconds. Not the capitalist seconds that go tick, tick, tick. The real ones that go one, two, three, four, five, and then we release, if that's okay. Can we all get together in three, two, one, and breathe in. Thank you. All right, so um, my background in education started a little bit early and I had no idea where it was gonna end up. I volunteered for Shoko. In my undergrad, I was supposed to become a chartered accountant. Yay! And then stuff got messed up because I come from the other side of town where things aren't clear and I had to figure out myself at university. I ended up with a public policy degree and at that point, I'd already known that I was meant for literacy development. So I then became a teacher. And in all of two years of that training, I ended up in a public school in the community that I grew up in, in Fuleni, Cape Town. I got to teach 360 learners every single day. And I was teaching um, a group of learners who were transitioning from Kosa medium speaking and uh, in grade four. They were supposed to be introduced to the English medium for their curriculum. And uh, long story short, I had to deal with a school principal that could not understand anything I was putting on the table for the kids. And in addition to that, I was too gay to waver the contract my way and impress him to keep me longer. And I'd also just started a running program for the kids outside of the school because I lived in the community. I had to move back from observatory to be closer to the school. And so I'd already won all the kids, and I had to do something about that. And so the academy is built on many principles, some of which I might not be able to put into words tonight, but the first center is how do we get our kids to respect the spaces in their community and identify corners of learning within the community because we don't always have the resources to go to the city to learn. Secondly, how do we build positive role models in our community using the older kids who've just passed the trick or still figuring out a system, how to navigate the mainstream system and the systems on the ground that sort of prevent them from successfully navigating the mainstream system? Those are learners such as matric dropouts, learners who are still repeating matric and are looking for options outside of the generic career moves such as maths and sciences, law, nursing, becoming a doctor, and things like that, because we actually really do need quality teachers on the ground in order to be able to do anything, any meaningful, impactful work in development for our city. My third layer is the fascination of my own artistic muses. I am an artist, I am a writer, I am a rapper. I am also just recently introduced to visual arts, which I've realized I'm really, really, really interested in, and have become quite good, and so I share that with my kids on a daily basis in the aftercare space. The main one that drove it home was that this year we moved to Mfuleni and we've had the space for about exactly six months and yet we've been able through poetry sessions on a Thursday evening, we've managed to get about 80 kids into this space 
consistently and give them themes and get them to go off and write on the topics that they care about, the topics that would impact the way we think about our community and the way we think about navigating the resources in the city. So at the center of that work is that I'm a trained maths teacher. So it really does help that I have the resource to actually look into their curriculum and support them in aftercare with actual academic support. So there's a lot going on. That's where the agony of putting it into words happens. But that is the main center of the work that I have started. And it is an honor and a privilege to have learned at the, H at the April Foundation. I met them last year. And that happened when I branched off to instrumental enrichment programs to qualify as a private practitioner to help kids because the schooling system is really just actually a death trap for everybody <laughs> who doesn't afford good schooling. So yeah, that's, that's it. Thank you so much, A4. Thank you to the Justice Institute. Thank you to everybody that is listening. Thank you so, so much um, to everyone for coming today. But also, just to wrap up today, I'd like to invite a colleague of mine, Samantha Kambule, to do a word of thanks and to just wrap up the evening for us. Thank you, Fufu. Um, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of uh, the Institute for Justice and Reconciliation and the entire organization team, I'd like to take this opportunity um, to extend a vote of thanks to all speakers as we wrap up this great evening and ceremony. A big thank you to the A4 Arts Foundations team, so Paulos, Nisha, and Josh for availing this venue to us. Um, thank you to our donors with whom um, their support, without their support rather, this would not be possible. And that is the Swedish International Development Corporation, which is uh, CEDA, the Royal Norwegian Embassy in Pretoria, the Embassy of Finland in Pretoria. Um, thank you to all IJAP staff that were involved in organizing this um, event. Prof. Tim, uh, Veronique, Jody, Mikhail, Laverne, Zusipe, Daniel, and Nebrata. Thank you to Sipovazi Jonas and Colin Mayer from the Bull Band. Um, and once again, congratulations to our 2019 award recipients, um, Lalela Art Foundation and the NFS Women Kuleni. We thank you for pioneering the work of reconciliation through the use of art. We are all inspired by your work. Um, and to our audiences and everyone in the room, thank you for taking the time out to be with us this evening. It's been a great pleasure hosting you. Can I please just ask that tomorrow when you get to your offices or at home, that you please complete our online ME4. So we've simplified things. We'll be sending you a link. Please kindly complete the online ME form. It will greatly assist us in preparing these events. Thank you and enjoy the rest of your evening.